does the fuel we put in our car actually matter that much? And we're not just talking about octane or in the case of diesel, cetane. We're talking about the brands of fuel and whether they're all the same or whether there's some magical ingredient in some of the premium brands, which is why they charge extra money, or are you just paying for a designer label when it comes to fuel? It's just helpful to understand what these additive packages are that are delivered with the fuel that we buy and how they help our engine. This enables us to make wise decisions determining our fuel choice. And please let me know in the comments what your preferred brand the fuel is do you always fill up with the same brand or do you just mix and match to whatever's convenient at the time and do you think it makes a big difference to your car performance or the overall reliability of it Initially, people were trying to make their own fuel, thinking particularly of diesel drivers using vegetable oil. And most diesel engines would burn vegetable oil, but a lot of diesel engines started to break down. The fuel injectors, the fuel pumps and other components inside the engine started to fail because this vegetable oil concoction they were pouring in didn't have the additive package which the manufacturers of quality fuels always add. We obviously wouldn't put diesel in a petrol powered car. We wouldn't put petrol in a diesel powered car. We've debated whether we should use the higher octane or the higher cetane fuels. And the general consensus is it depends on your engine. Some engines respond better to having the higher octane and others don't you don't notice any benefits at all but one of the key takeaways from that video was if your engine is designed for high octane fuel and you don't use it you can be down on performance perhaps even damaging the long-term reliability of the engine in some cases. So the fuel we buy isn't just hydrocarbons that burn. The fuel does quite a lot in terms of protecting our engine. Petrol or gasoline fuel, when we buy it, contains detergents. These can help to keep the injectors clean and removes the carbon buildup inside the engine. If we've been using a poor quality fuel, then we might be in a situation where there's been significant carbon buildup. And this is why it's not always good to do back to back comparisons of a full tank of premium fuel and a full tank of cheap budget fuel, because the overall wear and tear that you would get from the budget fuel won't have time to accumulate. And you really do need to give the car a bit of a run, a bit of experience on a few tanks of fuel before you see any noticeable trends, because everything builds up very slowly over a period of time. Deterioration on the injectors will again build up slowly as time goes by. Fuel also contains anti-knock agents that prevent abnormal combustion events that can be damaging to the engine and can just affect the smooth running of the car. They also contain corrosion inhibitors. You don't want rust building up on components within the fuel system. A lot of metal components reside inside the fuel system, the injectors, the fuel pump, for example. And if these were to start to corrode, they would drop debris into the injectors and the overall fuel delivery system would be compromised as that corrosion takes hold. They also contain stabilizers. We discussed in a video that fuel does expire. It goes off over time and stabilizers help to resist that. They keep the fuel within its spec for much longer. Diesel additives are certainly similar, but they have different objectives. You have cetane instead of octane and they encourage clean burning, faster burning with each cycle of the engine. The injectors and fuel system in diesels operates at much higher pressure. So the detergent package is formulated to cope with this and it is more critical to keep the fuel system on your diesel engine running efficiently and cleanly. With the advent of ultra low sulfur diesel, the diesel fuel has lost its lubrication. It doesn't protect the components inside the engine, the fuel system, and even the fuel pickup as well as it used to when it contained these high sulfur components. And manufacturers have had to mitigate for this in their modern formulations to just make sure you still get that protection, that lubrication, which is important to keep everything running smoothly in the fuel system. Diesel also tends to foam up when you're filling it's quite different from petrol, its counterpart. So additives have to be put into diesel to resist this foaming, this foam formation, because if you're sucking foam through the fuel pump and through the injectors, it's going to be detrimental to the lifespan of the fuel system. And as the temperature drops, diesel tends to form little waxy crystals and they can form 
deposits in the injectors, they can inhibit the flow through the fuel pump. And that can be a real problem. So inhibitors are added to the fuel to prevent that from happening. Now, not all additives are equal. Manufacturers have to produce their fuel to a certain specification or standard. They may be needing to meet emissions regulations. They may be in some countries mandated to provide certain types of additives to a, a certain percentage. But in the main, manufacturers use their own brands and formulations of additives. The chemical composition of these additives is very different between manufacturers. And we certainly see different claims from manufacturers' websites and from their advertising material. Shell claims that its fuel has proprietary cleaning products that are 100% more effective at cleaning carbon deposits from the engine. BP claims that its diesel additives clean injectors 60% more effectively than other brands of diesel. And Esso's premium fuel is branded as having twice the cleaning power of its standard fuel. So even the manufacturer's own claims indicate that some fuel additives are more effective at cleaning off deposits than others. And certainly keeping your engine in good condition, we need to use these premium additives more regularly or more frequently. It can certainly help mitigate the problems of maybe picking up some cheap petrol from somewhere that's not got the same degree of expertise and investment in the additive package that you get from some of these large premium brands. But again, it's going to depend very much on your car. Do you have a super high tech, high performance engine where the tolerances inside are so tight that the slightest difference can be significantly detrimental to the performance of the engine? Or do we have a clunky old car, maybe even a carburetor fed engine that is just not as fussy when it comes to fuel and all these detergents and cleaning products? I've certainly noticed that putting cheap fuel or expensive fuel in my car doesn't make that much difference to performance. I do in my car tend to get better fuel economy with the higher octane fuels. And I've noticed that in some cars, that's just not the case. You're just wasting your money. But it's when you use these fuels over a period of time that you get to really know how effective they are. And I personally stick with Shell. I use V-Power all the time in my engine and it's kept everything running really cleanly, really efficiently. I'm still getting at or beyond the manufacturer's MPG figures and performance is certainly where it was when it left the factory. Whereas I know other people who haven't used these premium fuels are suffering from all sorts of running problems and flat spots and have had to get injectors replaced. But I'd be really interested to know what your experience has been with premium fuels. Has it saved you from having to get expensive injectors replaced? Have you avoided problems with your particulate filters, for example? Or has that just happened regardless of the fuel you've selected? Well, at the end of the day, I would encourage you to do your research. Does your engine benefit from these premium fuels? Is it worth the extra money? And often the bottom line would indicate that it's not, but sometimes it is. And I can't answer that question for every single one of our viewers. It's a decision that we each have to make determined by the performance level of our engine, our ex expectations of it, and to some degree, the age and the mileage of the engine. Please let me know your thoughts on this video in the comments. Please also boot the like button. That really does help us to get out there. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. We'd hate you to miss out on the great content we've got lined up like this video and this playlist. Thanks for watching. See you in these next videos.